the harbingers of ruin are upon us. Cycle 1.1 is just around the corner, so I figured it was a good time to update one of my most appreciated guides of the previous cycle to the new patch, as we just received those notes as well. And here we are. This is the continuation of my Rune Master Frost Claw Elemental Nova Spark Charge Screen White Clearer. The B roll is from, of course, the previous cycle, as the new cycle isn't out yet. So just imagine everything is the same, but you have a little bit less AoE, kind of. And that is pretty much it. The Rune Master did get hit with a few nerf bats here and there. But overall, I think we are going from absolutely overpowered to really strong still. It should still take care of all the content with ease, with comfort. So if you enjoy the absolute insanity you are seeing on the screen, it's still going to be very much like that, and you should still very much enjoy it. Now, having that said, I hope you guys are looking forward to the brand new cycle. Make sure to hit the like button, and of course, let's go over everything that this build needs and all the updates that come with it. So as we dive into the build planner, most things should look very familiar. There's a couple of important tweaks that we have made, but otherwise it should look very much the same. So let us start with the skills. Frostclaw is, of course, our primary tool of application through the means of Celestial Conflux, reducing the mana cost with Spark of Celerity, Gift of Winter, Frozen Rain, and allowing for more applications to occur through the means of On Through the Snow, Ever Onward, and Crack in the Ice. The base setup that I've set up is this particular way. As you can see, we do have some gear that give us additional skill levels, but if you don't have them, that's okay. This is the base setup. I am, however, planning on getting the setup the way I have brought it forward to pick up Frozen Malice to see if the mana cost can be handled, as well as Fend the Frozen, get the slow and the chill chance, but more importantly, the ailment cleansing. I think that's a very powerful quality of life, leaving us with one additional point and that's either going to go in mana efficiency, depending on how it works with Frozen Malice, or another point in Shiver Shell to get more ward gained on cast. It's very, very potent. But that's entirely up to how things feel. You can definitely tell, though, that this is for sure going to be the base setup, so a tweak accordingly. But let's put everything back. Static Orb, the very skill that made a lot of people confused. There's just not a lot of good things to spend here. It's a little bit of a tech that we are using, but the only reason it's here is mostly because of the static armor. This is going to give us Lightning Aegis. Lightning Aegis is going to give us increased lightning damage, but more importantly, especially now with the Runic Invocation nerf, 25% DR. Very important. It's also going to help us trigger the Large Arcane Idol for more cast speed. Very, very powerful. Other than that, we are switching it to Cold so that we can have cold fire cold for our runic invocation setup and we're reducing the mana cost it's 13 points that are pretty much going to be wasted if you don't like this that's okay you can switch into flame rush instead and use some benefits through there if people want i can make a planner that uses flame rush instead of static orb and tweak accordingly with the runic invocation but otherwise, this is the way I enjoy doing it, especially since the Runic Invocation got nerfed and we need more DR. Speaking of Runic Invocation, let me actually go through it, because, yeah, we are using Cold Fire Cold to get the Rayowind's shield. The DR got lost, but they've added more ward to it, which is nice. Having that said, though, we're going to go for the cooldown reduction, the buff duration, a little bit of mana refunding, which I don't believe works the way I think it does, but it is there unmutable order this is going to allow us to get the same invocation every single time based on what we have on our action bar we have inscribed patterns runic energy copied scrolls i am however not sure how arcane battery is going to work now with the flat mana cost reductions if it doesn't work i might just rip this out and place it elsewhere who knows maybe a tuned approach it is a possibility Elemental Nova, the big AoE, here we go. We did lose out on the Infernal Nova. This is the nerf, basically, for Elemental Nova. It only applies to direct casts right now. We are compensating the points we have regained here by putting them into Arcane Elementorum, 
get a little bit of AoE back, as well as Elemental Expanse, obviously, and maybe making a little bit better use of Overcharge. As long as the mana cost skill is free, you can use that through Cryomatic Fragility. You should be okay, because it's more of an application, more so than an actual source of damage, which confuses people sometimes, but there you go. And we are also using Flame Ward. Especially since we are using the, uh, losing the DR of Invocation, I like to use Flame Ward right now. You could also use Cold Snap or something else. We are switching it to Frost Ward to get the Cold Fire Cold. We are picking up Flame Runner for the Continuous Haste. Obviously, we're also picking up the less hit damage taken and a point of Prismatic Buffer and an extra charge through Dual Aegis. These are the skills that I have set up right now. Once again, if you want a Flame Rush version, let me know in the comments and I can provide that later as well. So let us discuss the passive points, of course. We are 20 points into Mage. We're picking up 8 out of 8 Arcanists for the Intelligence and a little bit of Res. 2 Travel Nodes for Elementalist, giving us access to Mage Flurry for the Cast Speed. And then 5 points to finish it off for Knowledge of Destruction to get us Crit Chance and Crit Multi. Very potent. We're picking up 8 points in Spellblade. Not only is it more Intelligence, but it also gives us a little bit of Ward to K Threshold per Intelligence. And we are Instackers. This is very nice because they changed the formula of Ward and Ward Decay, so this is going to help out stabilize that a bit more. Although I don't expect us to have massive amounts of overwhelming Ward all the time, because that's exactly what they nerfed. Sorcerer, we're still picking up the usual suspects, Arcane Momentum, Essence of Celerity 6 point bonus. 8 out of 8 calculated destruction because crit scaling as well as intelligence, too good to give up mandatory even. We're picking up 1 point of Karanomancer, so we can pick up 5 points of Rift Bolt for Lightning Pen and Damage Leech. However, if you notice that you have enough damage to make sure that you leech back up to full after taking damage or, you know, sacrificing your health with the Twisted Heart of Okiros, don't feel too bad about taking points out of here and put them elsewhere, like the Rune Master, to get more value out of your points. However, until that point is reached, I think Rift Bolt 5 out of 5 is more than nice. We also have Rune Master, of course, the star of the show. We are picking up Unsealed Mana. We're picking up also Sphere of Protection, which I normally did not do because we had the DR from our invocation, but we lost that. So we're picking up Sphere of Protection to get a little bit of DR back. 8 out of 8 Arcane Focused. We're also picking up 6 out of 6 Mental Catalysis. This is going to help us with crit damage reduction taken. This is why we have crit damage uh, reduced on our gear to help it it reach 100% very, very easily. Also, more intelligence, obviously. We have Edict of the Scion. More area for area skills. And a little bit of ward. Not too shabby. We have 6 out of 6 inscribed instruments. I don't think I have to explain to you that things are good if we're using a wand. Which is exactly what the, as you can see, Mad Alchemist Ladle is. So, wand stuff, good stuff. Crit multi. We are scaling crit after all. We also have Never Late, which gives us access to a Rune of Dilation. You only really need three seconds here. I just didn't know where to put that final singular point, so I just put it up here to give a little bit more wiggle room. But three is really all you need. We also pick up 10 out of 10 Ancient Inscription. Intelligence, 8 point bonus. Cooldown recovery speed per 6 intelligence. Please and thank you. We also pick up 1 point of Rune Mode Hurricane. This is going to give us a continuous trigger of Rune Mode Hurricane, which is a buff for additional spell lightning damage. Very, very good. We're also picking up four points of Jagged Veil. Not because of the actual ward anymore, because they nerfed it. It can only happen five times per second now, as opposed to unlimited. But it still gives us a bunch of crit multi per 100 ward, as well as max more crit multi being 20%. So that's going to still be very, very good. And that is pretty much it. Like I said, you can, however, pick up some Rift Bolt points here for ultimately, and then also, of course, the Rune of Delation, giving you a total of five points, maybe, to flex spend elsewhere, depending on what you want to do. But this is my setup right now. I think this is very comfy. Having that said, though, let us move to gear, blessings, and idols. Starting with the blessings, we have the Grand Echo of Solarum, Void Res. Yeah. However, if you have enough Void Res, you can switch the Crit Multi if you would want. After all, with the new changes, we can switch blessings very, very easily at the uh, respec vendor, I believe. It's going to be very, very nice. All rest, very, very good. Flat armor, very powerful. 
best option we have. Physical res. If you have enough physical res, you can switch to percentage armor, which is very, very potent for damage reduction as well. And then, of course, the mandatory grant mysteries of the deep for that lightning shred, because most of our damage is going to be lightning based, because that's exactly what we're building around with the fragment of Enigma. Idols. The big two that you really need are the mana efficiency with frost claw obviously you want two of those that is mandatory we're also picking up the 300 mana gives us increased lightning damage as you can see we have more than 300 mana as a result of our gear and we also pick up some additional crit on top of that we have large arcane idol here giving us increased cast speed while we have lightning agus this is why we have the static orb lightning agus comes through the static armor node right here it's going to give us DR, increased damage, but also increased cast speed with a large arcane idol. If you don't run the static orb version, once again, let me know in the comments if you want to have the flame version. You can rip this out and you have more tiny ones, one by one idols, to help out flesh, uh, to round out your build. May you need more mana, may you need more res, may you need more lightning damage. It's very, very easy to switch these out depending on what you need. Just keep an eye on your resistances. If you have all everything you need capped, great. Start stacking mana. If you have more than 300 mana, great. Get some lightning damage. Get some armor. It's going to be a good time. In terms of the gear, though, the actual star of the show, the mandatory piece, is the fragment of the Enigma. This is what we're building around. We're looking preferably to hit it with a cast speed or crit multi or even a ca uh, or any kind of like good stat. But I find cast speed and crit multi to be one of the more powerful ones. Once you read 100% crit, very, very good. I like to combine this oftentimes with the Mad Alchemist Ladle. Try to hit for spell crit, try to get for cast speed, depending on what you can find when you start to slam on. On top of that, we have the Prismatic Gaze. This is going to give us some base crit, which is very, very important to try to get these delightful spark charges to go off and crit very, very hard. On top of that, we are using the Unstable Core. Do not be confused. The direct cast elemental nova does not work. It is there simply for all every, for everything else. The big mana roll, the lightning skill, the elemental skills basically plus one, the elemental damage, percentage mana on the implicit. That's why it's there. If you have enough mana without the unstable core and you don't need the levels, may I suggest maybe going tanky with core of the mountain. Some people enjoy that. A lot of percentage armor, a lot of attributes, which is very, very good for the intelligence, after all. Endurance, also nice, but the damage immunity can be a lifesaver. Keep an eye out on it. We're also using two opal rings to help round out our resistances, but also get intelligence. If you, however, are super, super lucky, I have never found these myself, you can use things like the Red Ring of Alteria. More all, all attributes, all res... A whole wonderful bunch of stuff with less damage taken. You're going to be very, very tanky that way. If anything, you would want to have two of those if you can. Praetorian Belt. We are switching away from the other belt, the unique belt that we have, the Souls. Because the mana generation of it is going to be a little less. However, if you still find it with like a decent amount of LP, which is surprisingly uncommon, you can still run it. However... With a regular belt, we can start slapping on more cooldown reduction, more reduced bonus damage taken from crits. We can even use a cleanse ailment. We have some options here, including mana regen as well. Very, very potent. It's a very flexible belt. Add what you desire. I do like using the swaddling of the erased if it rolls very well, because you can get intelligence on there on top of all attributes. You can get some cast speed on it. Shred is very nice to have. And as you can see, you also get more spell damage to low health enemies. Very, very good. On top of additional cast speed. However, failing that, you can just use a regular glove. May I recommend the Eternal Gauntlets. Get some armor mitigation against damage over time, which is very, very good. Bunch of armor too. And then you can get like any stat you may need, like resistances or kind of intelligence or any kind of other good stat you may want to slap onto it. However, a good rolled swelling of the erased gets you very, very far. Citadel boots. I like using the Citadel boots. Although, if I can get a very nice belt, I might switch this away for a unique boot. However, it's very difficult to do so. 
and getting the seconds of haste after you use the reversal skill is going to be an incredible quality of life that I really, really enjoyed the previous league. It made the build feel so incredibly smooth and good. It's hard to give up. On top of that, we have movement speed, intelligence, if necessary, reduced armor bonus taken from critical strikes as well as more cooldown recovery. However, if you want to go the unique path, the unique you most likely want is one that has intelligence on it. Blood of the Exile is a very, very popular one for this because that's another 12 potential intelligence as well as a bunch of movement speed, which is very, very good. If you can get like a, a nice LP on that, oof, you're off to the races. And of course, the most dreadful one, Twisted Heart of Okiris. If you want to run the Frostclaw version, great. If you want to run more intellect, awesome. Remind you, you don't need to use it. You can run without the actual stats required, up to minus four. So don't worry about it. If you just have it, you can use it. That's the most important part. If you want to slam something onto it, you want to try to get Frostclaws plus tier 4 preferably, or intelligence, um, tier 7 I mean, preferably, on either intelligence or the frost law. And that's pretty much best in slot for the rest of the game. And with that, we have a preliminary update to the Rune Masters, Frost Claw, Elemental Nova, Spark Charge, Screen White, Blaster Caster. I'm not sure if I need a better title, but you know what I mean. Let me know in the comments below if you want to do that Flame Rush version instead. I'll drop a link in the description box or in the comments below if enough people ask. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I am very excited for the next cycle. I hope you guys are too. There's a lot of awesome stuff. So many unique, so many new builds I want to try out. I'm going to have a great time. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Good luck, everyone. I'm out.